Hi, and welcome to another edition of Easy Theory. So we're going to continue our lecture series from where we left off. And what I wanted to do today was to talk about a problem that was sent to me by user TMD on my Discord server, link in the video description. And what is this problem? We were just talking about it last time about how to convert an NFA to a DFA using the, pro the power set construction. And so I have two NFAs right here and they have exactly the same language. Well, what is the language of these? Well, here's the start state of both. The structure is identical, except the transitions at the beginning and the end are different. Well, what's the language? Well, it's all the, two, the, the strings of length two that are not AA, BB, or CC. So AB is in there, AC is in there, BA, BC, CA, CB, and not a, A, B, B, or C, C. Those three are not in there. And, sim and same thing over here. The only difference is that the, the transitions with only one character on them, uh, well, it's not, it, it's not one character, but it's just that there's only one transition here. The one transition is up here versus it's down here on this side. And what do I want to be able to show is what if we converted these to DFAs? So what if we converted these things to DFAs? What would actually happen? So let's actually na name each of all of these states. So I'm going to call them Q0, Q1, 2, 3, Q4, and same thing on the other side. Not that it will actually matter. So let's actually um, start converting these. So the good thing about these is that there's no epsilon transition, so we don't even need to worry about epsilon closure. So how do we start? Well, we start by making the DFA, uh, which is just the start state. And maybe I should stick to the notation I had before, which is the set containing Q0. And we know there's no other states in here because there's no epsilon transitions at all. Well, then if we go on input A, well, we only have one choice of where we can go, which is Q1. And there's no epsilon transition, so we don't need to take care of that. And then similarly, if we go on B, we can go only to Q2. And if we go on C, we can only go to Q3. Now is where things get interesting. So on input let's just say from Q1 on input A, there's no transition on input A right here. So on input A, we're gonna go to the dead state because there's no state that we can go to. And just like before, this state will loop on everything because if we're not in any state at all, then there's no way we can get to a state. So we loop the self loop here. And what do we do on B and C? Well, we go to a state Q4 so on input B and C, we go to a state Q4. And from Q4, we'll notice that there's no transitions coming out of here. So no matter what we do here, we got to go to the dead state because we don't accept the strings of length three or longer. So this transition goes up to the dead state. And with Q2 on input, it would be B in this case, so B comes up here, and then AC goes to, actually goes to Q4. So I can make this a little nicer. AC goes to Q4, and for Q3, the transition C goes to the, uh, the dead state, and A and B go over to here. So, in effect, we basically just gained one state. We didn't really gain anything um, beyond what we had before, except a lot of transitions, but the structure is pretty much identical to the first one. So now let's do the other one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to copy and paste this delicately, copy right here so we can actually see it. So now the structure's gonna, uh, seem a little different. So again, we have just the set containing Q0 here. And notice now on input A, we could either go to Q1 or to Q2. So we, we got to be sure we handle that. Again, no epsilon closure needed uh, because there's no epsilon transitions at all. So on input A, we go to Q1 and Q2 right here. 
On input B, we go to 1 and 3. So we got to take that into account. So Q1, Q3. And on input C, we go to, it looks like, Q2 and Q3. Okay. And then, now let's see. So from this guy right here on input A, neither of them go on input A, uh, because Q1 has nothing on A, Q2 has nothing on A. So on input A, just like before, we'll again go to the, the dead state. And we can actually see something very similar that's going to happen with these other two states, that from the Q1, Q3 state, there's no B emanating from either one of the two states. So we're going to come over to here, and on input uh, C from the other one, we're going to get exactly the same behavior. And then now let's see. So now let's do the, let's say the A and the B transition. Let's just do the A transition. So the A transition from these two, well, Q2 doesn't go anywhere, so we're not going to, on input A, I mean, doesn't go anywhere on A. So Q3 is the only one that matters, and that goes to Q4. So we're going to get very similar structure like before. And Q4 obviously has no transitions coming out of it, so it goes to the dead state on everything, just like before. The on input B from Q2, Q3, that also is going to go to Q4 because Q3 doesn't have any transitions on B, so the only one that matters is Q2, but that also goes to Q4, so I'm going to add a comma here. And from Q1, Q3, on input A, the only one that matters is Q3, well that goes to Q4. And then on input C, we're going to get the same behavior. And from Q1, Q2, the only one that matters on B is Q2, is Q2, but again, they're all going to go to Q4. So the amazing thing that we can actually see here is that we're going to get exactly the same DFA. Well, actually, the one thing I forgot is a final state. Well, the only, one, the only state that's final in both cases is the Q4 state, because the only state that was final before was the Q4 state. But uh, the, the point is that the same DFA, identical DFA, was reached. And one thing that you can prove is that this DFA is minimal. You, you cannot make up a, a smaller DFA out of uh, for this particular language than this, which is pretty nice. But here's the amazing thing here. These two NFAs are completely different from each other. They're not the same. And you can prove that you can't make a smaller NFA out of these. You can't, um, you can't eliminate one of these states so, or anything. So these two NFAs are completely minimal. You can't make them smaller at all. But they are different from each other. They're not the same NFA. Whereas something that you can prove about DFAs is that uh, DFAs that are minimal are unique. So that's something that we'll hopefully cover at some point. But DFAs, if you have the smallest possible DFA for a particular language, it is unique. It, it's a, no matter what you call the states, it, the structure is identical. Whereas the two NFAs that we have here, they're completely different because the start states the, the start states transitions are completely different in both cases. But never mind the rest of it, the start states transitions are different. So I thought that was actually really cool that even if you ignore epsilon transitions and have every single uh, string have either one or zero computations, which is actually quite amazing, uh, in, at least in this case, in this one, you can have multiple computations. And that's something that is also amazing about this, is that the language is identical, the number of states is identical, but the number of computations for particular strings are different, which is actually pretty amazing, with such a small example that you can show something quite amazing like that. So thank you to TMD for showing this to me. I thought that was really interesting how NFAs are um, not necessarily unique, even if you have the smallest possible NFA in terms of the number of states. 
So I hope that was interesting. Leave a comment below if you find any other NFAs that are um, that are interesting like these because a lot of the properties of DFAs just don't hold for NFAs. As always, please like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps with the growth of the channel, especially commenting. Commenting really helps. And as always, I'll see you next time.